good? It's your girl Shanika, aka Stallion. And as you read the title today, I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty and the dark side, the truth that they don't tell you about stripping. I feel like stripping is glamorized. All you guys see is the lifestyles, the, you know, you just see all the greatness, the money, you just see all the greatness of stripping. But there is a dark side to this game. And I'm here to give you the inside scoop of it all. So I actually took some notes and I wrote everything down because I just want to basically cover everything. So if you see me looking off, it's obviously because of my notes. So we're going to go ahead and get started into the video. So I think the most important thing to start off with is the money. No, every night is not a good night. I have literally walked out the club with zero dollars after paying a hundred dollars to work. I've done walked out with thirteen dollars. I the amount just varies. Like it's not a real job. Like you go to a real job as long as you clock in, you are guaranteed a paycheck. When you strip, every night is a gamble. You have to pay to work every night. That there's no escaping that. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter the club you work at. You have to pay to work. So imagine going to work, paying $100 to work, and then you didn't even make that back because the club is slow, the guys are there not spending any money. Like, so that's, to me, that's the number one thing. Let's get that out your head. You're not going to make $1,000 every night. Although, although, you know, good nights, I have, me personally, I have more good nights than I do bad, but it's just still like, it's not a guaranteed thing. It's not guaranteed. It's not a job, it's not a paycheck. You work off tips strictly in dances, obviously. And so like also that comes with some clubs charge $5 a song, some charge $10 a song, some charge $20 a song. To me, it just varies the club you work at, the state you work at, and that's just pretty much how that goes. And another thing with the money is now that you, you're dancing, you're making all this money and people see it, now everyone has their hand out. All of a sudden, their cars, their cars breaking down every other week. They're late on rent. They need this. They need that. So that's probably the biggest thing that bothers me when it comes to dancing is the constant handouts. Like, you know, I had to speak with a family member like, hey, do you know I literally get naked for money? Like, this isn't something that I love to do. Like, I'm doing it because obviously the money's great. Like, don't get it twisted and the freedom. But like, I work hard for my money. You know what I'm saying? I work a different type of part for my money. So it's just the constant here. Like, it's like it comes from everywhere. And it gets overwhelming at times. Like, it really does. Woo, let's talk about working with nothing but girls. Can you say drama, 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 drama? Like, it's literally like being in high school all over again. And then we're all grown-ups. So... It's just, it's always arguments, it's uh, people stealing, it's the arguing about the customers. Like, it, it's so many misunderstandings in the strip club itself. And then like, you know, when you add money to the equation and, and just, it just, it makes everything just so tricky. Like, so tricky. Speaking of money, you will get crossed out so quick behind some money. You think you got a friend in there, you think y'all rocking, y'all getting money. Guess what, now you done found out that she done hated on you behind your back to the customer so that he can stop dancing you to dance her. You think you cool with a girl and it's a money situation and now y'all not cool no more. You go from best friends to la la land to a situation happening with some money and now y'all beefing. Like, the change is that quick. Like, I don't know how many times I've been cool with someone and then like literally we've had a situation where I feel like I've been crossed and it's like, now I can't even look at you the same no more. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's just really crazy when it comes to money. Root, money is the root of all evil. Like, it's either gonna bring the best out you or it's gonna bring the worst. And a lot, you know, a lot of cases, it brings out the worst in people. A lot of people never had nothing. So you go from not having nothing to making a whole lot of money you don't know how to act. You know what I'm saying? So, being pretty, popular, nice body, whatever the case may be, if you are getting money, you looking good, you're like almost first choice when it comes to customers, you have the stage sets, like whatever the case may be, that brings a lot of hate. I will never understand that. 
I will never understand it. How are you mad at someone for getting money? How are you mad at someone for being pretty or popular or, you know, first choice? Like, that's just what it is. So you get hate for no reason. Like, I've literally worked with girls, don't know why they hate, don't know why they don't like me. Don't even give you a chance. I really don't care about having a chance, but it's still the fact of what did I do to you? Absolutely nothing. To me, that's just some self, some self issues that you have to work on. Um, it's like being, it's like being in a big competition. And honestly, in a way it is. You're working with so many girls. So it's like, you know, and the, the thing is, the common denominator is we are literally all there for one thing and one thing only, and is that is to get the money. Like that's it. Like, but hey, extra stuff comes with it. So I'm pretty sure like you've heard the saying, it take money to make money. That is so true in this game. Stripping is not a cheap sport. I'm gonna say sport. It's not, it's not cheap. Do you know how much it costs to get uh, your hair done? We, um, like I wear wigs. My wigs are hundreds of dollars. I may have a $600 wig. Um, like I switch it up. I wear a wig four days out of the week and then I switch it up. Next week I'm a whole different person. Like you have to keep that element of surprise, like keep coming. Like, so happen to get your hair done on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis, hair, I mean your toes, dance outfits. No one talks about how expensive dance outfits are. When I first started dancing, they were like $100 an outfit. I mean, of course, they done, you know, style changes. So now you may pay $50 to $60 to $75. That's just one outfit. No one talks about that. Dance shoes. You, um, when I first started, like I said, when I first started dancing, I used to pay two, dollars $300 for dance heels. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, like I said, style changes. So I'm probably, I'm spending maybe like $100 per heel. And I'm kind of, I'm tall, I'm thick. The heels that I wear, they always are breaking. So I'm constantly having to purchase like new shoes. Like you want to look your best when you're working because you are competing with over 40 girls in a night. So why wouldn't you want to keep yourself like high maintenance, your upkeep good? Guys don't come to the strip club to go see the girlfriend that they got at the house. They come to see gorgeous, beautiful, nice bodies, makeup done, like, you know, and again, there's girls who don't know how to do their makeup or don't know how to do their hair. So guess what? That's another fee on top of your bar fee. I see girls get their makeup done every night. I see girls get their hair done every night. That's another bill. Um, it's certain hairstyles that I won't even wear like braids. I, the girls wear braids. I only look good in braids when I'm not working. Like, it's just certain hairstyles that I will not wear because it does not make me no money. So like, that's another thing to keep in mind. Like, I base like everything, like my hair, my wigs and my styles of hair is based off the club because I wanna make money. Like, you know, so you have to keep certain things like that in, you know, in mind. Let's talk about how it changes your perspective of yourself. When I first started dancing, I was natural. I was like, oh, natural this, natural that, blah, 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 blah. But you see the big booty BBL girls making all the money, you know, and eventually it starts to mess, you know, with your confidence. Like, you know, you start questioning yourself. Oh, well, I could have a smaller stomach or a bigger butt or thicker thighs, you know. So it starts to raise a lot of insecurities within yourself. Um... Again, you're competing with several women. So you definitely want to be like the hottest thing on the floor. Um, I waited almost eight, nine years of my of me dancing to get surgery. And honestly, looking back, I kind of wish I would have did it way sooner. I might have, you know what I'm saying? So like, um, you know, it, it definitely, I mean, I'm very, I'm a very confident person. Obviously, um, it took me time to get there because, like I said, I'm competing with so many different things. I've always felt like I was that B. You know what I'm saying? But working in that environment would definitely have you questioning, like, oh, what can I fix? Like, what can I do to, you know, be better or look better, whatever the case may be. And I don't, I don't body shame. Like, it is what it is. You have surgery. You do, you do. You don't, you don't. Me, I just feel like don't go overboard. Some girls get hooked to that surgery. And... Now you done ruined your body. Like, we still have to age. We still have to be 40 and 50 with these bodies. Like, 
you know, so, and there's natural girls who make good money. They're, you know, obviously, you know, the what everybody sees on the, you know, on Instagram is all the surgery girls make a lot of money. And in a case, sometimes it is true, you know, and that's just, that's just a part of the game. You just gotta have, you have to have confidence in yourself. That's the biggest key. I done seen, I'm sorry, forgive me for saying this. I done seen ugly girls walk around with bad B energy and get a check. It's all about how you feel within yourself. I would, I probably would never got surgery had I not started dancing. And that's just my own perspective of that. Let's discuss the guys, the customers. I, I don't even know where to begin. I just know that I've dealt with some of the nastiest men of my life. Um, I've had a guy pull his penis out, put it on my back. Um, I've been dancing and like dancing. I'm a tall person, so you know, they're sitting on the chairs. I've had somebody literally put their tongue on my ass. Like, I've had uh, a guy I'm dancing for, you know, you may be a little close, and lick my nipple. Like, what is wrong with y'all? You don't know me, I don't know you. Just because I'm naked does not mean you invade that type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, it's just, ugh. I don't understand these men. I don't understand them. We're there to dance. We're, we're there for entertainment. We're there to put on a show. We're there for a fantasy. That's it. That's all. Like, of course, in those situations, I definitely had security get in that, you know, they handled it. Trust me. It, it was handled. But what makes you think, let me, let me put my body parts on this woman that I have no idea. They want to take you home the same night. Have sex with you raw. Raw. Like, you don't even know me. I don't even know you. I dance. This is all I do. Like, they want to, it's, I don't even know where, I just, that topic is just, it's, just it's, it's really just unbelievable. You attract stalkers. You got people, you might dance with somebody and he's just, he just becomes obsessed with you. Now he's at the club two nights out of the week. Now he's at the three nights out of the week. Now he's there four nights out of the week. Like, and you know, I, I done dance for guys that who pretty much stalked me and I've had guys wait outside the club for me to have a conversation. Um, I done danced for another customer and then they're literally standing by you like this, watching your every move. Like, and they don't, and they make it obvious. Like you make eye contact and you're like, okay, this is creeping me out. Like, I feel like some men just don't have no self-control. And that's questionable to me. Like, mm. Ugh. This next topic is major. It's time off of work. Okay, so when I had my daughter, so when I got pregnant, good thing, I, the thing about me is I'm a, I'm a big saver. Like I save, I'm smart with my money. So when I got pregnant, I took a year off work and thank God that I had a big savings account. My daughter's dad at the time, he had basically put me on like an allowance, if you want to say. So I was getting money from him like every Friday on top of what I had. So my money was used for bills and stuff. The money he was giving me was used for gas, hair, food, like, you know, any extra necessities that I needed or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's major that you save your money because at any point in time, anything can happen. When I had got my BBL surgery, um, so with that, you know, hey, you're gonna have to be out for maybe six weeks. Okay, boom. So I spent $6,500 on my surgery. That was just my surgery. Let's not talk about aftercare. Massages are a hundred plus a hundred some dollars for each massage. Um, you have to buy supplies. I had to stay in a, um, I forgot what they call it, but you got to stay in the house where they take care of you. That was another twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. You have to have, you got to have money saved up for the month. You know, I was out for six weeks. So guess what? I had to have all my bill money put it to the side. And I'm the type of person is, I don't touch my savings. So guess what I did? I had surgery in January of 2020. So December, I was working five days a week. I was grinding it out so that I could be ahead so that for that month of January when I was out, I was comfortable. You know, I've seen girls get in car accidents and I know a girl, you know, she broke her leg. She had, she lost everything because she wasn't able to pay her bills. 
you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, talk bad about her, but she didn't set herself up. So when it comes to that, you have to keep that in mind. Anything can happen, deaths in the family. You got, you know, you're not gonna be able to work. Working in that club is mental too. So, you know, you had somebody that died, now you gotta take a two weeks to three weeks, four weeks off. You have to set yourself up for disasters. Like you just have to. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's you know, you just have to, you have to set yourself up. It's not a regular job. You, it's not a regular job. The pandemic, for example, when we were out of work for what, two, three months, I was living comfortable because I saved for, you know, all this time that I was dancing. I seen some girls, no judgment, hopped right on OnlyFans two weeks after the pandemic was announced. Like, hey, we're shutting the world down. To me, that tells me you're not smart with your money. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know, some people can work from home. We can't work from home. Literally, we go to, like, our, our, our work is at the club. We didn't receive no pay for that. This topic is really annoying. Um, the light skin versus dark skin versus nationality battle. Um, personally, I feel like people are, you know, they have their preferences. So me, I don't really care about that. Um, but do I think that light skins or Spanish girls or whatever the case may be, whatever you are, the lighter people make more money? In a way, I could say that, yes. Um, but like I said, I can only speak for myself. I make good money. But you do have that, there is that, you know, that argument all the time. Oh, only the light-skinned girls and this, that, and the third. And, you know, you have guys be like, oh, well, I only want light-skinned girls. And then you get girls who get offended. Well, I get it, but that's their preference. You know, um, that's a tricky one. But do I think that argument is real? I do, I do. Um, at the end of the day, you just gotta get it how you live. There's nothing, there's nothing that can be done about that, honestly. Um, you just gotta get your money, man. Take care of yourself. Look good. Get your money, regardless of what you look like. I done seen um, an ugly light skin stripper. She didn't make no money. Just because you're light skin on me, you automatically get money. But I do feel like, you know, they tend to be more of the chosen ones. Let's talk dating. Um, I could say most of my dancing career, quote unquote, I have been in a relationship and I have uh, genuinely dealt with different kinds of guys. I've dealt with the insecure one um, where he literally had to come to my job and was like watching me interact with other guys. I was always myself. I stand firm on being true to myself. So I never like switched up when he did come in. Um, every time we got into big arguments, I was a stripper hoe, a stripper B-I-T-C-H. I would, you know, all of, you know, all of that. But I'm gonna be real, being called that does not offend me. It is what it is, cause guess what? I'm getting money. And I was like, <laughs> but um, you definitely have to date someone who understands your field, who, who trusts you, someone who is secure with themselves. Um, you know, someone who understands your lifestyle, someone who's pretty much kind of lived the same life. You know, like I've dated mainly, you know, scammers, drug dealers, you know, street guys, people, you know, they understand like, hey, this is just a hustle. You have to date someone who understands it's a hustle. I'm not going in there for none other than my check. You know what I'm saying? And then you got people who are like, okay, well, you know, we dance for celebrities, we dance for NFL players, basketball players, blah, 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 the list goes on. So of course that creates insecurities within a partner sometimes. Cause they feel like, hey, you may leave them for someone richer than them. You know, so I do agree that it's just, it's not easy dating a stripper. You have to have thick skin. You have to have trust. You have to have understanding. But I do believe that if you create a healthy environment for your partner, I do feel like things can work. Um, always be transparent. Um, something I've learned over time is not to overshare some of the things that I go through at the club. You know what I'm saying? It creates doubt in you know, people's minds. So you just basically just have to have someone who's just, who gets it. If a person does not get it, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And also I vow to, my thing is when I get in relationships, you're not taking me out the club. Um, I'm not quitting for you. 
because this is how I fund my lifestyle. This is how I go on these trips. This is how I buy wigs or I wake up and want to do whatever I want to do. Um, you know, I've seen girls quit dancing for guys or don't, you know, or just have relationship issues when it comes to stripping. And it's like, I've seen them being like, the, you know, a girl will leave the club for a guy. And you know, this is, I'm not trying to be rude or nothing, but guess what? He ends up cheating on her, beating on her. Um, he gets killed. He goes to jail. Like, it's just too many, it's too many things that could go wrong. So me personally, I'm not, stop dancing for a guy. This is how you met me. This is what it is. But I will make you comfortable enough to date me. It's, I go to work to make money and I leave. That's it. That's all. When you, um, when you start dancing, if you are, you know, a get money dancer, at some point you make yourself a target. I don't even say a get money dancer, but at some point you make yourself a target. Um, I've had a friend of mine robbed at her home. Um, she literally had to move like that next week. Um, you know, that's why I've posted money, uh, but I try not to like overdo it. Um, I really don't do it on my Instagram. I'm obviously doing it for my YouTube, just to guys, just to show you, you know, like a little inside scoop. But you know, getting home safely, it's it's par it's it leaves you with a paranoid feeling. Every night I leave home, my money, I have my gun on my lap, I carry mace. Um, obviously, I'm constantly driving, looking out my rear view menu, my, my uh, mirror. Like you have to take those steps every night because you just don't know who's watching you you know what i'm saying um i've literally heard I, i've heard a guy tell me that he plotted on a stripper one time like they was just telling me the story like i'm like they danced her at a popular club in atlanta and followed her home well follow her on the way home hit her car basically robbed her for the money back that they threw um i know a girl who got robbed at gunpoint you know it turned to a news thing like it, you put yourself in a dangerous environment. You make money. These guys out here, they're hungry. They, they they don't have no money. Everyone's trying to live up to this lifestyle on Instagram that they see. They feel like a girl is an easy lick. Like, you know, none of us, like, yeah, I carry gun and, and mace and all that, but I don't want to be in no shootout. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's scary. I'm, be, I'm very paranoid. I don't trust anybody. Do not walk up to me when I'm leaving the club. Do not walk up to my car. Guess what? Something I've learned years ago is I fill up my gas tank before I go to work. Ain't no going to no gas station after work. And if I've ever, if we've ever resulted to that, we're rolling up three, four cars deep with all my girls. All of us got our guns. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have to stick together in that, in that, you know, in that instant. So, you know, there is a safety issue that you have to consider when dancing. Like, you just have to. So believe it or not, we do have slow seasons um, in the club. So, oops, sorry. Uh, some tend to think that summer is slower. Um, some tend to think that, because I feel like in the summer it's way much more stuff to do. So that I can, I can in some way, I can agree with that. Um, August, the kids go back to school. Towards that, you know, people got to get school supplies, get, you know, get all that stuff together. I could believe that too. Um, December. December is probably one of the trickiest months because you roll from, um, obviously you got Thanksgiving um, and then you got Christmas, you got New Year's. So it varies. I've had great Decembers then I've also had Decembers where it was like, oh, oh my gosh. Like, what am I gonna do? You know, so I do, there is there is seasons that are better than others. We used to have tax season. Tax season used to be good. Um, I don't I don't really see the taxes no more like that, but we used to, we couldn't wait till January, February hit. Psh, made good money. I didn't miss no days of work then. So yeah, um, I do think that there are seasons where the money's good, and then there are the seasons where the money's bad. You know, but that also comes with you having to save your money and preparing for those things. Let's talk uh, a very sensitive uh, subject for some, uh, substance abuse. Um, a lot of girls have to be drunk every night to work. 
And honestly, sometimes it's really sad. You have the drunk functional girls. You have the drunk, loud, obnoxious, do the most. You got those girls. Um, you have the girls who pop pills, who smoke weed, who, you know, whatever they, whatever their drug choice is, some girls cannot dance without being on something. Me personally, I didn't start drinking till like down the line. And honestly, still to this day, I'm 31. I don't drink like that, like in the club. Like I actually prefer not to drink in the club so I could be on my P's and Q's. It'd be a lot happening. So I just can't, I can't drink every day. I can't do it. But you have some girls who just have to do it. Their nerves are bad. Their, you know, it calms them down. Like, um, you know, and it sucks, but that's just, that's just what it is. You can't let, but don't let the liquor and the drugs, like, you know, change you. You know, sometimes that stuff will, that stuff can change you as a person. You get hooked on it and now you can't, now, that, now there's no going back, you know? So yeah, that, I mean, it's a sensitive top. It's a sensitive subject. Um, like I said, just some people, they have to be on it to work. You got me, I got a high spirit. I got a high vibe. I don't need it to work. At, at certain at certain points in my dance, like dancing, I felt like I did because I didn't want to be there. So I would get drunk, or you know, I don't say but like two, three shots for me, and I'm there. But I just, I just can't. And then, mm -mm, you know, I do pray for those girls, and I hope that they can find alternatives, you know, for that. And I'm not saying that they in there we working with drug addicts. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that some girls just, they have to go to those things to be able to work, you know? So once you, once you start dancing for a while, it starts to tear you down mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, it's draining, you know, like I'm to the point, I'm 31. I've been dancing 10 years, one year off, obviously it's my pregnancy. Um, it's to the point where I get anxiety now pulling up to the parking lot. I'm not where I want to be at. Yes, I have box trucks. Yes, I have other businesses I'm working on, but I'm not fully established to where it's time to quit. So, you know, your body's always hurt. We have to walk around in heels all day. You know, um, obviously you're constantly dancing, moving around stage. You know, it's tiring. Like, and then don't let you have responsibilities the next morning. So now you're, you're, you're sleepy tired and now your body's tired. So it's hard to get up and do and handle those things you have to do. They still have to be handled because you have a life outside of the club, but it's, it's draining. It's toxic. You know, I don't know how many days that, you know, I don't said it a million times to my boyfriend, to my, to my brothers, to my family. I hate going there. I do. It used to be fun. It's not fun no more, you know? Um, so keep that in mind that it does take a toll on your mental health eventually. It really does. The most important topic that no one talks about, well, they, they laugh and they judge people is getting out of the club. I've seen girls come, I've seen girls come and go. Um, it's hard when you're making a thousand dollars a night, seven hundred, eight hundred, five hundred, whatever it is. You're you don't have to wait two weeks for a paycheck. Like you get addicted to that. You get addicted to the money. You get addicted to the lifestyle. You get addicted to the things that the money provide. You know, you almost feel like it's like you almost feel like you stuck. And that's why you see a lot of girls they leave. They don't have a plan. They never had a plan. They just leave because they're tired of it. And then two, three years later, they come back. They got married, had kids, whatever, divorce, whatever the case may be, they come back. You have to have a plan. I started saving my money very early on. Um, obviously, things happen when you have to touch your savings. Now I have to start over. I've lost it all and started over twice. This time, my third time, I'm not going for it. Like, you know, I've invested. I wanted to start my businesses way back then, but I was scared to spend the money. You know, scared money don't make money. At this age, I'm 31. I'm not old. I look good. I'm pretty. I don't, you know, I still, I'm in shape to still dance. But mentally, it's time for me to transition. But I'm not transitioning until I have it 
at least 80% figured out. And I'm working on that. So you have to save your money. You have to have a plan. Um, you, you, you have to, and you have to stick to it. Don't go in there. Don't start dancing because you want to look like the girls on Instagram, get your body done. There's, use that money, flip that money. A lot of girls I can say don't have goals, don't have plans, are literally dancing day to day. If that's the case, then just get a job. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have to, it's just like when drug dealers. I've seen guys sell drugs 10, 15 years. Guess what they did? They turned it into restaurants. They turned it into trucking companies or clubs or lounges, like whatever the case may be. You have to strip with a purpose. My best friend danced, um, she danced to pay for, you know, her nursing school. She's a traveling nurse now. Um, she used to be at work in the sections with her, with her books, studying for tests in the section while the club is going on. And after she's done studying and doing her homework, she's dancing. Like, the thing is, you just have to have a purpose. Don't come in here. It's not for fun. It's not for fun. A lot of girls, they start off, it's fun, this, that, and the third. And now you done missed out on four or five years of money you could have been saving, uh, investments you could have been investing in. You know, surround yourself around the right people that will help you flip the money in a good, positive way so that you don't have to do this anymore. You know, and I am working on a better future. And that's that's my end all be all. I'm dancing for my future. That's why I dance. So you guys definitely learned of a lot of the bad. I will say it is not all bad. You know, like I said, I love having the freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I love the ability to go to work on a Tuesday and walk out with a check. I don't have to wait two weeks. You know, there's a lot of pros to it as well, you know, but we can't just glamorize the good without telling the bad. There's a lot of young girls who are looking into it. And like I said, I started dancing because of the struggle. And for the girls out there who are struggling, like, listen, I get it. I totally get it. If you feel this is your way to help you out, go for it, but do it the right way. Do it the right way. Have a purpose, have a plan. Um, you have to have a strong mental. It's not an easy game. It comes with a lot. Um, you know, it's just, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, like I said, have a purpose, have a plan, have goals, do it for the right reasons. And you know, things will eventually work itself out. Um, I want to say thank you for tuning into this chit chat with me. Um, if you like this video, if you want more requested, I see the stripper videos are highly requested, so I will get more into the nitty gritty. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I want to say thank you for watching and have a good night.